Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we are doing your future self's big advice on what to prepare for to achieve your wish or wishes in plural depending on what we're going to find out uh, in this reading for next year. And to do this, this is the deck that we will be using. Let's shuffle it. I do see these two. Pile one, pile two, and I feel drawn to this one. This will be our pile number three. Okay, so let's check out our cards for today's reading. For pile number one, you have the spider plant. And this is what your card looks like. You have the three of diamonds as well. For pile number two. You have the bird of paradise plant with the ten of clubs. And for pile number three, you have the silver inch plant with the um, jack of hearts. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add these right now. If you, however, prefer to pick with your zodiac signs, you'll find the timestamps, the timestamp to that down in the description box. There we go. So for pile number one, uh, if you see any smoke on the side, I do have Palo Santo and Lavender today. And I want to, throughout the reading, help you cleanse negative energy that you need to start fresh for the next year. So this is what's going on here. <laughs> uh, for pile number one, your crystal is the beautiful green jade. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, your crystal is the beautiful green jasper and this is what your crystal looks like. And for pile number three, you have the malachite and this is what your crystal looks like. So take a look at which one of these three cards or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this or these will be the readings for you here today. Feel free to follow your intuition. I highly recommend you don't restrict or push yourself to pick more than one pile and to follow what it is trying to show you. If you feel drawn to several piles, maybe even all, feel free to check them out. There will be messages there for you. If you feel drawn to just one pile, then in that case, this will be your pile. And once you're ready, please head down to the description box, click on your timestamps, and I will see you in your readings. In a moment, I'm about to assign different zodiac signs to each pile. If this is something that you do not prefer, I highly recommend you pause the video, take as much time as you need, and once you're ready, I'll be seeing you in your reading. But if you prefer to pick with zodiac signs, then my dear soul family, this section of the introduction has been created specifically for you guys. Okay, so let's shuffle your crystals around really well. And in all cases, I like to swirl my fingers and start picking whatever. Oh, I, I feel these two. So the signs for pile number one are Aries, Virgo. Ah, this one's peeking out. Libra, also this one's peeking out. And Capricorn. For pile number two, the signs are Aquarius, Pisces, 
Scorpio. And I feel this one, I'm holding this one. And Sagittarius. As for pile number three, the signs are Taurus, Cancer, how about we move it just a little bit so that you have space to see your zodiac signs, your crystal and your cart. Okay, so we have the signs Taurus, Cancer, Leo, and Gemini. So, my dear soul family, these are the crystals, the cards, and the zodiac signs for each pile. Feel free to pick your pile using your rising sun and moon. I highly recommend you check the three, but it's really all up to you and your time and what you want to go by. Sometimes you will find that all of them are placed in one pile. Sometimes you'll find them distributed amongst two or even three piles. And if you want to go by one, um, like just one sign, you can of course always go by your sun, but I highly recommend you go by your rising. As astrologers explain, it is the one that deals with your outermost world and you'll find that more, more likely it will be the sign that will resonate with you the most. Once you're ready, please head down to the description box, click on your timestamps and I will see you in this reading. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at your future self's big advice on what to prepare to achieve your wish or your wishes for next year. I thought it would be such an important reading to do. You know, oh, I forgot a deck. Let me bring it here. Such an important reading to do as we're on the precipice of the next year. It is a timeless reading. Of course, you can watch it anytime. But for the reason I've done this now is because why not hear our future selves with the experience they've gotten, they know us the best, and to see, what, looking back in retrospect, what type of advice would they give us, this future self that has achieved your wishes, what is their advice to you, so that you can definitely um, make these wishes come true this year. Okay, so... These are the decks that we will be using. I see these two as well. Whoa, you got three. A lot of Oracle cards will trust the process. Uh, oh, and your crystal for this reading is the beautiful green jade. And the signs are Aries, Virgo, Libra, and Capricorn. If these are not your signs, please do not worry about them. Do note that they are present in your reading because their energies will be matching the energy of the reading itself. As like every detail sometime of the reading, it's a general reading. Sometimes they match with you guys, sometimes they don't. It does not negate the fact that it is your reading after all. Okay, so I also have in this reading some Palo Santo and uh, Lavender with me. Uh, I'm, I wanted to put it in the reading today in case you want to cleanse out some energy. It is working here for you. Just set the intention so that you can start the next year fresh. That, so that's the intention of the Palo Santo that I have right here on my right. And let's check your cards. So the first card here is a three of diamonds with spider plant. It says a healthy plant will develop little plantlets that you can pinch out and pot up to create even more plants. Isn't that cool? And it's already sparking a lot of ideas in terms of maybe the advice that your future self wants to give you. But let's wait and see. You can already see it as an advice, right? <laughs> you have the fig. Very nice. And, um, well, I think I'm going to put it right here and place a card instead right there. So you have butterfly garden. 
speak about planting and stuff uh, in terms of energy of this reading. So we'll keep that open in our minds. You also have the wolf and rose hip with guardianship. All right, interesting. Also giving me ideas, right? And uh, interestingly, I see with the figs, all these seeds, um, it's an interesting highlight that we would see because the one thing we notice about figs when we do actually split them in half, just like this fig right there, we see so many seeds, right? So this is definitely giving me a lot of ideas for your reading. Um, in terms of what your future self wants to tell you here, you have not for you and, and um, I don't know, strategy, like we have a chessboard and you do have these Chinese crackers, fortune crackers with nope. So a window as well. Like maybe your future self is looking through and saying something. We'll find out in a moment. You also have happy, happy. Love this card for you. Uh, interestingly, you do have a, a gap, which is creating a, some form of square here. So I'm also going to take that as part of your reading. <coughs> Especially that you have, it's like a rectangle here, but more likely like maybe a square or something. You have... Valiant courage. Valiant courage. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Valiant courage. But I do know, of course, what it means. Valiant courage. Take action with passion. Lovely. You have ascending the mountain. Keep going forward. Goodness. How impressive. Okay. And you have... Great adventure, take a risk, venture forward. I mean, this is like becoming clearer by the second. And I don't know why we've suddenly created this zigzag. It's almost like ups and downs, right? Ups and downs, like, like ebbs and, do you see it? Ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. So, and, and look at that square being formed right here again. More likely a square, a rectangle-ish that forms for you. Uh, like gaps also, do you notice? Like some gaps or something. We'll find out in a moment. The only way to find out is to take a look at your tarot cards and see exactly what it is that your future self is advising you with. Okay, so these are your tarot cards. I wanted to take more, but obviously uh, the way the reading is meant to come out for you, it, there was more emphasis on the cards, you know, it's not about how many tarot cards, but we do see that one tarot card can tell you really so much. So we'll find out what your tarot cards are trying to show you today, along with the details that we'll probably be finding out in your Oracle cards. So you have the Emperor. So cool. The Wheel of Fortune. Wow. You have the Queen of Swords. Can I please the Queen of Swords here? I can, I can. Right? You have the Hierophant. You know, and, and as I was placing the Hierophant on the mountain card, I just heard in my mind, my mind, ain't no mountain high enough. And it's so, it's so weird because usually in my day, I don't just get songs that hit my mind when I see a word <laughs> and it happens quite often in readings. And this is what makes me really believe that I've just channeled something. Ain't no mountain high enough. So yeah, we'll get to it in a moment. I, I, I can already see you understanding what your future self wants to tell you with that. And you have the four of swords. And you have the Page of Swords. I see two cards. I think I'm getting an idea to place one here. We'll open it in due time and place one there and open it in due time. When it's due time, <clears throat> we'll adjust the cards so that they can fit with these tarot cards. But we'll keep them here. I think 
these are in to fill in the blanks. So perhaps your future self is telling you there are blanks, spaces that are missing in the puzzle of your mind of how you want to achieve these wishes that you're hoping for next year. Ain't no mountain high enough is saying that your future self is like literally telling you through that channeling sentence that if you think these things on your mind that you wish to achieve achieve are just hopes, they're not. They are absolutely doable for you next year. You can make them come true. And we're going to be taking a look at the intelligence that your future self is trying to portray here. Your future self is definitely communicating here to you in this reading and letting you know that if you do venture forward and just first of all, set the intention, that's the seed here, just set the intention that you actually want to achieve these wishes, you will definitely make them come true. <clears throat> and I get this intention idea as well from the Wheel of Fortune. Fortune through so many people coming together and setting their intention. And it's like some form of wage award. And through that collective intelligence too, through that collective intention, or maybe intelligence wants to say the intention of the mind, they were actually able to uh, move this, right? So I feel your future self is telling you, especially with the head, it's all about setting your mind's intention towards these wishes. So, and look at the butterfly right on top of the mind. Your future self here is telling you, the head, the emphasis on the head, is telling you, change your mind. Don't tell yourself, but this is a big wish. Could it be possible that I could be, have, do these things? Your future self coming obviously from the future is telling you, yes, it's there, it's happening. These gaps of maybe lack of knowledge or not knowing how it's going to happen are not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So in your case with the ebbs of flows, your only bet is to just start the process because if you had known these missing pieces, you would go, ah, oh, I can absolutely do that. And since the information has not reached you yet, your future self is telling you, just plant the seeds and see where it takes you. Just like when we plant a seed and we watch it in awe, how it grows. All we do is just like take care of the instructions that come with the plants. And we, you know, from the person, we, um, the shop that we buy it from or what we read about it. And we, we give it its water, we put it in the necessary environment and it grows. And it's not, we can claim that, oh, I've created this whole plant uh, partition in my uh, living room, in my garden, on my windowsill. But really, it's not us. Uh, we watch the magic and we forgot that it's magic that it's happening sometimes. We forget that it's magic that's happening sometimes. And such is the world. I, f I see your future self telling you you're going to be so happy you won't believe it. <laughs> These wishes in deep in your heart that you want to achieve for next year, you can absolutely do it. But as long as you're not planting it, starting it, you will have these gaps that will be the very things that convince you that you can't do it. In fact, one of the interesting things I've read many, many years ago in personal development was that sometimes um, doubting even 1% could be the loudest voice that you have in your mind. Because if you believe you can do something like 99% and you have that one doubt, like you, let's say you believe you can ace this math test. You studied so well and you got this, right? But you have this 1% in your mind that's saying, maybe I won't ace this uh, math test. Even, if, even though you've done everything, every time you solve this equation, you ace it, you will find that this 1% as opposed to the 99% will be the loudest voice in your mind, making it the predominant voice when it could be absolutely untrue. And so a little bit of doubt can wreak havoc, like um, 
for example, let's say somebody trusts their partner 99%, it's that 1% that could really put them in so much stress all day long. So what I'm trying to say with all of that is that perhaps you, you, you can see your skills or you can see the possibilities or you can see the resources that you have, but with the missing information, it's making it look like it's, it's, it's not doable. When in fact you do have everything that can make it possible, which is what your future self is trying to say here, especially with the egg, you can birth this. Look at the child here connecting with the root chakra of this person sitting down on in the yoga pose, which to me implies you can, you can absolutely birth these wishes next year. In fact, they could be, they could, with this egg and the child, it's almost like you're fully pregnant and ready to birth it. You absolutely can right off the bat is the kind of message I'm really channeling here with this card. So you've got the seeds, you've got every, you've got the fertile land, you got it. And it's about setting the intention with the mind saying, okay, I'm going to keep my mind open. So to receive, I'm going to keep my mind open to the idea that I can in fact make these wishes come true. And this way you've um, unblocked, perhaps that's the window, you've unblocked um, the ideas from being channeled to you, given to you, provided to you so that you can see the light. You know when, when they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that's it. It's about opening that channel to receive. And, and I see that so long as you're like, oh, how is this going to happen? You're like, really? Or... I don't, or, or even like believing, but thinking it's too hard or any 1% thought like that, maybe the gap that's not putting the picture together. And I see your future self is saying with the nope, keep an open mind. You not having this is not your path. Take action with passion. Start like with the wolf here, searching with great passion uh, and you will be given the way. Uh, do note that it is a process of ebbs and flow. Trust it. Take the ride because only through the ebbs and flows will you get your picture covered, the missing pieces. Why? Because when it, um, because when you're on the high point, it's working. That's awesome. When it goes down, you're learning something. That's the most valuable part because it fills these gaps. So in all cases, when it starts working, it's great because some part of it started working. When it doesn't, it's filling up why it's not working anymore so that you can do it in the right way and understand what makes it work. So follow that process. Don't feel bad when it goes down. Don't feel so high when it goes up. Just stay balanced, being happy, and also at the same time being open to learn. Because at the end of the day, remind yourself with one thing. Through that ride, remind yourself that you are going to receive it. Consider it yours. Consider it yours. Knowing that it is yours next year, don't worry about it any longer. Don't put your fears and worries there. And focus on the how. Like let the journey go up and down as it wants, just like a ship in the sea. Let's say these people are taking all the water, what is it called? Bumps. It's like the waves are sometimes high, the waves are sometimes smooth. And every time the waves go, they're so worried, right? Let's say their future self tells them, hey, you made it to the other side. It was all good. Not, none of you, nothing's going to happen to any of you. Now, when the waves come, they're like, whoa, <laughs> clap and laugh about it. And they start reframing their minds to enjoy the right. Because at the end of the day, the day we're all going to cross to the other side. We've seen the future. And that's what tarot, when it sometimes shows you the future, it's what it's providing to you. It's um, knowing what could happen could be very beneficial to us. And um, most importantly, mentally, right? And maybe it would make us look at the right picture instead of looking at the wrong one. And I see what the, this is, what your reading is doing here for you. It's telling you, consider yourself on a great adventure on this ship. 
and when the waves are high, enjoy it. Because you've already found out that you are going to be safe on ground tomorrow morning. So let it flow and maybe even play some games and uh, learn something or two as the waves ride, learn how to now adjust your balance and have some tricks in your pocket for the next time when the waves are high. So I, I truly can not see your future self telling you, um, start looking for a strategy. Instead of saying, no, no, it's not for me, it's not for me. Start looking for the strategy and see how it can be for you because it definitely can be for you. <clears throat> and you've got the seeds to make it work. Here's how it's going to happen as your future self is explaining. Once you start planting these seeds, and we do know that it's an ebb and flow ride where you're going to see great things working right off the bat. And then with the Queen of Swords, you're going to learn so much information, uh, especially the Queen of Swords being in conjunction with the Page of Swords. You, I can constantly see you from student to expert, student to expert, student to expert, that process of going from student to expert. Uh, in fact, the Hierophant is a learning journey that is going to make you some form of expert on how to be what it is that you want to be or do what it is that you want to do. So I do see you planting the idea, aka allowing the universe to put you on that track because now you're opening that window for the light to enter. And it is going to start sprouting. Once it starts sprouting for you and things are like, you can start seeing, hey, 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 these wishes are starting to work. Here we can see it says a healthy plant will develop little plantlets that you can pinch out and pot up to create even more plants. So when these things start to work, they will give you a clue on how these things are done. These wishes are done. And your future self is telling you once these little clues show up, you're going to go, right, I know how this works now. Let me now create the space to uh, make it even bigger. And that's what I see you doing here. It, this next year, especially in the beginning, two things are happening. Things are starting to work because you've opened up your mind and you're searching and you're trying to find out ways on how you can do that. You've opened up your mind and connected to that path into the universe, you've connected the plug. And so now you're getting information and you're allowing the future to teach you. You're allowing the future to pass on this information. Sometimes it is through a channeled idea, through a message, through a synchronicity. And sometimes it is through the very experience that we go through, allowing the ebbs and flows to take us, knowing that we will make it to the other side. Okay, so basically with the Four of Swords, uh, your future self is telling you, we're happy. It's awesome. Enjoy the ride with the Four of Swords. Like, don't look at it as a scary ride, as a painful ride. Enjoy it and stay at peace and tranquil with the Four of Swords. Like, enjoy the ride and learn tranquilly. Don't be, like, um, attached to it where, like, it has to happen now. You know, you've got to have that calm to make that wage aboard uh, move, right? And if anyone's frustrated, why is it moving? It's maybe going to drop, right? So you just want to allow the energy to flow, plant the seeds, think and search, and just plug to that energy. And you will see that right away, just like you plug things into the wall, it's the light's going to come. It's going to take you and trust the ride. Uh, and it might look from the very beginning like it's a long way ahead, but soon you will find out uh, that you have reached your destination much sooner and faster than you thought. It's going to sprout pretty early, especially for you, my dear pile number one. Is this the message that we're seeing from <clears throat> your future self? So guard that energy. Don't be discouraged right away. Let it ebb and flow. Remember that, my dear pile number one. So... There are two missing pieces that your future self wants to show you straight away. Let's check them out. If we push this a little bit here, never want to um, cover your happy happy. It's too sweet to cover. <laughs> now, let's take a look at what your tarot card is. 
Whoa. What a beautiful card. So you have the four of wands. Okay. And look, it's coming right next to passion. I saw that as I was placing the card. And we can do the same with this one. We can push it down. Oh, forward. I uh, remembered in my mind, pay it forward because I saw forward first. So I don't know. Maybe pay it forward is talking about, maybe you can help others. It could resonate with you. But I think what I channeled here is like, do what needs first and don't worry about anything else at the moment. Enjoy that ride. In fact, yeah, enjoy that ride is a big part of your reading. Enjoy that ride and soon you'll be creating that empire or that situation that you want. It's going to be systematic with the emperor. I feel like your future self is telling you you're going to know how to do this so well that you're probably going to have a system and it's going to be working like clockwork for you. It's just going to be going ding, 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 ding almost to a point where you don't have to worry about it any longer. And you have the six of pentacles. So what are your two tarot cards trying to say here? Let me think about it. What are the two missing pieces? Four of wands and passion. This is quite interesting, right? Ah, I see. Remember when we said the first energy that you want to have is that open-mindedness uh, so much so that you're already searching right you're already searching for the solutions and the ways to do it so you gotta tap into that energy also with the emperor i i feel like um you want to be systematic like put a certain time of the day to do a certain thing so that when that time comes you automatically do it or put a task list system where you finish these tasks every day, depending on really what it is here that you are focusing on, that you want to achieve. So put some form of system that would make it work. Maybe jot things down uh, or something that is suitable to you. So yeah, definitely do a system. So back to what I want to say, that's the first thing, set the intention and put a system for it so that energy flows. And I see with the four of wands, the wands are usually passion. It's interesting that they have come up. Also, the four of wands is a step up, a milestone, a new milestone. So another energy that would work for you is to tap into the energy of excitement rather than the energy of fear. So you want to move your energy and perhaps maybe you're looking at one side of the chest. You want to focus on the like the yin and the yang, right? You want to focus on more the the yin, which is the spiritual part of seeing things, meaning, in my opinion, that you want to focus more onto intention. You want to focus more onto excitement, doing things with fun, rather than from a place of fear. You want to shift these two great energies. Perhaps they are the missing spots or two of the missing, one of the big missing spots, at least, here with the Four of Wands, is to shift the energy of fear and I say fear because you have valiant courage so you want to shift the energy of fear into passion uh, um, and n knowing that fear comes from you know the future of course uh, us thinking that something is going to go down in a way that we don't want it's perhaps saying detach from the results for now you must enjoy the ride. It must become part of your um, way of doing things. To detach from the results for now. Forget about the results and um, enjoy the ride. It's like, it's like cooking, right? Um, a long time ago, actually not that long, but <laughs> a long time ago, I really, I wasn't one of the people who liked cooking to be honest with you because um i go from not feeling hungry to suddenly being very hungry so i'm gonna give you the example here with how i shifted my mindset here and once i go from the process to for of being uh, at least how it was uh, like that in the past when i've adjusted my eating so many things changed 
but I used to go from not hungry at all, like fi like uh, um, five minutes ago, uh, I would say I'm not hungry at all. Oh my God, I, I can't eat anything. Five minutes later, I'm like, I'm so hungry, I'm cranky. <laughs> and so because of this process, I think I've learned to not like uh, cooking. And I would just do anything that's quick to curb that hunger. So I, I, a long story short, I hated the cooking process to say the least. And watching people enjoy and being mindful about how they hold their vegetables, things like that, how they are proud of holding their knife, how they, they um, have great pride in making it look pretty and organized, as they're cooking, even though nobody's going to see that, you know, and, and having everything clean and organized and um, enjoying that process, enjoying hearing the cooking process, like I, I, watching them, watching people who truly enjoy cooking made me fall in love and shift my mindset uh, towards cooking from I hate this process, I just want to eat <laughs> to this is so much fun. I shifted my mindset now. I got an apron that I like, uh, organizing uh, things, getting uh, like s the two, three containers that I would enjoy using every day and so on and so forth, not to bore you with this. Long story short, I started little by little uh, actually shifting my mindset, hearing podcasts as I'm doing this process, um, taking the time to speak to somebody that I haven't spoken to in a long time and things like that. Uh, connecting with others, listening to things I enjoy that maybe I wouldn't have had time to do, yada, yada, yada. I've shifted the process from like really hating it to, hey, this is a time that uh, I look forward to. So I think your future self is here telling you to shift your intention from I just want to have this to uh, go for it. First of all, that's the first advice. Go open your mind towards it. Start searching for ways to do it. But most importantly, the gap here is enjoy the ride. Forget about um, the destination for now. It's like the people on the ship. Maybe one person would say, I hated the ride. It was so bumpy. Another person would say, that was so much fun. How else would you have that experience unless it's with water? You know, something that go, that takes you wee <laughs> and then puts you down. So it's a perspective. And I see your future self is telling you, I've learned to be happy with it. I've learned to enjoy it. Maybe here your future self is even telling you the journey itself has become even more fun than the final result. Like your future self would say, it, I would do it for free. I would do it <laughs> if nothing is coming out of it. So there is a great missing piece here of it's really fun. Uh, enjoy it. It's part of the fun. And um, it, uh, yeah, it's like some people love to now take ships to travel. Speaking of the, of the ship, because it's the journey itself. It's the riding the ship and the experience itself that brings them joy not just the destinations that they're going. So yeah, definitely the first strong advice for you is to start enjoying that ride next year. Do everything with a lot of pride and a lot of joy and you'll see things sprouting as a result for you quickly as you open your mind and your passion and soon, very soon towards even maybe the first quarter of the year because you have three, could be the first three months. Within the first three months of the year, Things will start sprouting and you're going to put your finger on it and you're going to go, whoa, I know how to do it now. I, I, there's definitely hope this is going to grow. It's working out for me, whatever this wish is. So that's the first missing piece that your future self is providing to you. There are others that you must discover through the ebbs and the flows. Let's take a look at the second valuable piece that your future self is showing you here. You've got venture forward. Keep going forward. What, what are the like... Uh, Oh, I just channeled something with the forward, forward and the six of pentacles. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Look, guys, you know, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. One of the like um, how spirituality, in my opinion, shows up in math and statistics in business and um, in so many ways, it's like peeping through and we don't want to look at it. And we're so dependent on it. Like one of the things I studied in university is the statistics, how if you flip the coin, 
um, 100 times, you will always get 50% one side and 50% the other side. You know about this and, and how you can predict things accurately um, with the rule of prob probability, right? And so if you think about it, it's not really probability anymore. In fact, even in business, they say, uh, with the, one of the advice that they would give in the cold calling, uh, and one of the advice you give the salespeople is with cold calling, to shift your mindset towards it, do note that with every 10, uh, with every nine no's, you, following the Pareto principle, you're going to get a yes. So every time you get a no and somebody tells you, no, thank you, I'm not interested, tick right next to it. Great, I'm just getting closer to my yes. And you pick up the next call and it's a no. Pick up. I haven't worked, by the way, in sales before, but I did work as a, a trainer uh, to giving trainings to companies. And that's one of the information that I've learned that I was passing on and uh, seeing the feedback later from the salespeople it was crazy. It, it was crazy. It's the rule of probability is what I'm trying to say. So with all the no's, the no's, the no's, you get your yes. And I've used this in my life and other things, maybe not in sales, but in other things. The Pareto principle is awesome. The rule of probabilities. So what am I trying to say with all of this? I'm trying to say your future self is saying, just keep moving. See, you could have had just one forward. The reason this hit my mind is the number of forward. Do you see? You're starting, you're starting to see it now. <laughs> the number of forward we're getting it and the six of pentacles, which is giving back, right? So your future self is telling you, continue to try, continue to move forward adamantly uh, uh, towards this because every time it doesn't work for you, clap for yourself, ticket. Uh, off of your list and say, and say, with the rule of probability, my dear me, I'm closer to getting my yes. So it's all about that passion, that energy, that opening up your mind and just moving towards that path. And you try it enough times and in, and in one time, it's just going to work. So if that's the equation, go for it. And this is, it's like so cool that your future self is showing this. It's like, you know that um, picture that we used to share on social media like many, many eons ago with this miner that has come such a long way and right before the diamonds, this miner was giving up and saying, oh, I'm tired when they had just like two more hits to go to find that diamond. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's that sometimes we give up when we're on the precipice of receiving. Sometimes there's a little bit, wait, a little bit to go. And so... Imagine it a couple of tasks off your list. You, you, you forget about the results for now. You tick it off and you're like, I'm nearly there because I have been doing it. Um, I've been moving towards it. I've been moving forward. So move forward, move forward. No, 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 no. One of them is going to be a yes. And the cool thing about your reading is that you have, to, in my opinion, something major happening in the first quarter with three and so another thing major happening in the first six months. So these wishes that you have continue to plant the seeds from now. Uh, note that as you go forward with passion, enjoying the process, you know, if it doesn't work, you're enjoying it anyways, right? Uh, something by the first quarter, it seems your future self is showing you, will happen as you move forward in, on this, uh, into this process. Something by the second quarter is going to happen. And you can see here two and six, two quarters, uh, giving six, a total of six months. So two things are happening in the first six months specifically. So open up your mind. Yeah, two things are happening in the first six months. Open up your mind, start moving and start taking it as your equation of getting whatever it is that you want in your world. Enjoy the journey, open your mind to it, start searching and start taking action and keep trying because one of them is going to be your bingo. Wow, this reading was so long, but uh, yeah, the, this was uh, meant to come out this way. 
your future self wanted to deliver something important to you. You seem to me like a passionate person or your future self is so passionate. They're like, go forward. Believe me, I'm coming from there. I'm telling you it's going to work. Just go for it and do it sooner than later, right? Make it happen for you in the first six months of next year where the first one or the first huge part happens in the quarter, first quarter, second one in the second quarter. And my dear pile number one, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity handbook. It could really help you out in your goals next year. It's small, straight to the point. You're not going to waste time or procrastinate reading it. But you will find that it has all the key advice and secrets to helping you become a productive person right away. As soon as you finish reading this ebook, and it will change your mindset forever about how you see productivity. You will enjoy doing it. That's the most important part about this book. And yeah, that shift in mindset will truly change your life. I, I, I wrote this ebook with, with so much passion, making sure that everyone reads this book changes their minds about productivity. I know you're going to love it. And so if you want that to support you for the next year uh, as part of the changes that you want to make, please do make sure you check it out. You'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box. And uh, there's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number one, thank you so much for tuning in, sending you so much love. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that I have Palo Santo here and Lavender. And I wanted to light it for you guys to help you put the intention of cleaning any energy, cleansing any energy so that you can start fresh for the next year since this is the topic of the reading. So before we begin, if you want to set your intention on cleansing something, put it now as the Palo Santo works right next to us for you guys. Okay, so in today's reading, we're taking a look at your future self's big advice on what to prepare to achieve what you wish for next year, your wish or your wishes for next year. Could be plural. We'll find out together. So your crystal for this reading is the beautiful green jasper. And your, your card is the bird of paradise. We'll read it in a moment. Also, the zodiac signs, in case you picked your pile using your zodiac signs, the zodiac signs for this pile are Aquarius, Pisces, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always say, please don't worry about it. Do note that they are present in your reading because their energies will be matching the energy of the reading itself. It's a general reading after all, and some things will be a confirmation for your pile. Other things may not resonate fully with you. Does not mean at any point that it, it isn't your pile. Okay, so these are the four cards. We'll pull out one small, let's go again. One small oracle card here, thank you. There we go. And this will be your tarot deck. All right, so you have demons. How interesting. We'll see what this is about in a moment. And look at that. You have, it, your card says bird of paradise. Isn't it interesting that on one hand you have paradise and on the other hand you have demons, right? The dichotomy here is very interesting and it's definitely catching my attention right off the bat. How about we still keep them together, but this way? so that we have space for your reading. It's still giving us that dichotomy uh, that we observed in your reading while allowing space as well. Oh my God, great adventure. Take a risk, venture forward. This popped up in pile number one. And so you also have with the one and the zero, the 10 of clubs. If you were drawn to pile number one, I highly recommend you check it out. It was an awesome reading uh, after all, also one. Okay. You have the goat and willow overcoming obstacles. Okay, actually we can put it here, right? So that's nice. You have transformation. And you see with that hand gesture, there's transformation 
within. We'll see why in a moment. Maybe you're, maybe you are transforming next year. It does say lush tropical foliage, this bird of paradise, that can reach six feet in height with bright, beautiful bird-shaped flowers blossoming, right? So a part of your reading here, I think your future self is talking about, maybe some of you are wishing to heal something within yourself, maybe... Um, he, uh, maybe you're transforming physically with the height uh, being into consideration. Maybe you're transforming in terms of how you look next year or something. Maybe you're transforming how you feel. Or maybe your future self is saying that as you create these wishes, you will be transforming too early. Just letting you see the different aspects that I see so far. We'll find out in a moment. And you have unfinished symphony. Did we see unfinished somewhere else? No, we didn't. Okay. I don't know why I felt like I saw something unfinished or something. No, 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 no. Probably in my mind. Uh, like a déjà vu kind of thing. <laughs> Total déjà vu right there. Okay. Probably was channeling something for you, perhaps. We'll find out why this was a déjà vu. Maybe you've tried something before. It didn't work and your future self is like telling you to try it again with a deja vu? Probably. One and the last card is this one. Oh, no, no. I said last card, but I feel this one as well. All right. So let's take a look at your tarot cards and see what you have. Right off the bat, the sun card. So nice to see, gosh. So nice to see for you. All right. You have... Oh, that's an extra card in this deck. It says, happy squirrel. <laughs> so how adorable. These two tiny troublemakers are having a blast playing on their tree. But don't mess with them. Their mischief can cause big trouble. Interesting. Okay. You have the tower. Interesting again. How the cards are coming together. Mm. You have the seven of pentacles. Maybe people are finding out who you are. You know? Oh, wait. Ace of pentacles. Yeah, I do get that idea of something looking like something on the outside, but tasting so good on the inside or being something else on the inside. You have the Knight of Pentacles. Page of Cups. The Wheel of Fortune. Where will it stop? Nobody knows. Hashtag destiny. Spinning round and round. Okay, and finally, before the last space spot on the table you have oh yeah. the hermit through the darkness of the night i journey into the realm of dreams seeking clarity and enlightenment it's interesting that we start off the reading with uh, the sun and uh, finishing the reading with the darkness which reminds me of the cycle right the, right off the bat this is talking about a cycle so we'll keep these two cards to the side. We can leave them right there and we'll open them in due time. So let's take a look at how your future self uh, is advising you. What is their big advice on how to prepare to achieve what you wish for next year? Oh, look, light and dark, paradise and demons. Now, that's interesting. Cycle. Hmm. It also reminds me of the caterpillar and the butterfly. And how can a caterpillar fly one day? It goes through this phase where it can't see. Phase that where it dissolves. It can't recognize itself anymore before it turns into this ethereal, awe-strucking butterfly. 
and perhaps the cycle here with the black and the white, the paradise and the demons, the sun and the darkness is what your reading is talking about. I'll, I'll, because look, just like the butterfly from the cocoon, a butterfly arises, you see here from the coin, there is delicious chocolate within. So we can see something awesome coming from maybe a form of difficulty you don't want to go through. I get it. Look, look, pile number two. Your future self is telling you that your transformation lies within something that you initially don't like to do. But it's going to transform who you are completely. It's going to transform your life and how you want it completely. So the question becomes with unfinished symph symphony, the déjà vu means that maybe you've tried it a couple of times to make this wish come true. And you're like, ah, oh, this is too much. I Maybe this is discipline towards something. And you're like, I don't want to do this. I'd rather go back. And so with the happy squirrel, maybe at the moment it's adorable and fun and cozy and nice to do, but then it would uh, cause trouble, big trouble, right? It would cause you to experience things you don't want. And that is not getting your wish come true. So your future self is telling you, you must sit down with yourself. See the hands within the heart and listen to your heart. Which is it do you want? That which is more, which do you want more? That short term gratification or that long term gratification? And there's no right or wrong answer. See the fingers are pointing towards your heart. Once and for all this year, instead of going through like maybe guilt or shame or anger or frustration, make your priorities clear and say, right, so I'm not going to feel guilty about this thing and this thing. I'm, I've decided that uh, for, I, I want to do these, right? And, but for these things, I actually rather have uh, these long-term advantages over these short-term advantages and I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to break my discipline over them. So this way you are at least ready to venture with what is important for you to venture through these years this year and who knows maybe when you've got all these things working out for you which we'll talk about in a moment you'll probably have a bigger appetite to go, hey, things are working for me. I think now I'm ready to venture in other directions. So I, I have this strong sense that you gotta be flexible with the willow tree. Sit down with yourself and go, right, I'm not ready to change this and this now. I, I gotta stop feeling guilty and shame over it for now. For now, not forever, but for now, or however you want it. It's all, it's your life, it's in your hands. And these are the things that are so important for me to focus on. And these are definitely things that with the page here, I want to start enjoying the long-term gratification of. So there's no right or wrong. Don't tell yourself this is wrong. This is right. Sometimes it's a process, just like the wheel of fortune. It's a cycle. Be kind to yourself and finish these things that are in fact important to you uh, for now and once you make these drastic changes in these areas i believe your appetite is definitely going to change <clears throat> and with the dream catcher and the good luck here you're gonna go you know what with the uh, ball number eight i got more than i thought i was gonna get i turned out to be lucky with patience with the seven of pentacles and actually going through these things i didn't want to go through you know the uh, difficult thing, things that we just jump into and sometimes we uh, don't have the emotional muscle yet to bite and swallow through. But once we actually do take steps, it becomes easier by time. And that muscle gets built and we find it so easy to handle and grip. And so slow and steady is the idea that your future self is telling you go slow and steady and for, for sure you'll be motivated as you see things grow for you and working out for you. It's going to give you even more motivation. 
And also, it's going to open up your appetite eventually towards the things that you, at least for now, have decided to be flexible with and to take a look at it later. So here with paradise and demons, your future self is telling you it's not all black and white and be kinder towards yourself. But there are some things that you must venture into. It is these big hopes and dreams that there are, that are not negotiable for you, that you want to make happen. And do note with the Wheel of Fortune, it's a cycle. It's almost like a spiral where you start small and then you have the space to get more things in since things are now part of your life and it's working out fine. You've tuned it in and then the spiral becomes bigger because now you're able to fit in your cycle of life more things easily and so on and so forth. And you do see people in life who handle just one thing and they think it's taking up most of their day. And you see, on the other hand, another person who's handling seven things, even the same pe person, past and future, handling seven things and they have much more time to enjoy their day than that person. There's no good and bad person here. Um, this is just a person who has gone through it long enough to set a system where they can do all of this and more and be happy and someone who only needs to set a system so that this flows into their lives very easily as we do things in our lives we actually go through it it the seven of pentacles it shows that they start fitting comfortably in our lives it's like for example the first time we start eating healthy it's like a whole process of feeling overwhelmed and then little by little, we start knowing, hey, if I prepare this one and this one beforehand, this process could be a piece of cake. And if I do this and that, and it just suddenly starts working out. Oh, there's an alternative for this. And there's an alternative for that. That makes it so easy. Actually, I like some of these alternatives more. Or that kind of actually tastes good and so on. And things start working out seamlessly into your life. So that's the kind of thing I'm seeing your future self telling you how they've succeeded is to be flexible. But at the same time, you must start taking action, jumping, taking a leap into it. Don't sit there watching and it's going through that darkness. Rather, I want to say that beginning of the difficulty as you find your way out because you will always find a good way to make it match your life and your world. And it's just going to be part of your life in a way that's so easy to handle. Slow but steady wins the race. Slowly but surely, it's going to fit into your life and it's not going to be torturous as, it, as the first time you're doing it or the first week. And you, you're going to have a grip on it and you're actually going to enjoy it with the Page of Cups. Just tried the cutest milk tea with the most delicious boba. <laughs> so I, I really feel like you're going to try it first and then it's going to work out for you and you're going to feel it's delicious. You're going to feel it's good and, and can't wait to have it again. I think you're going to love these changes that you do, in fact, make into your life as opposed to um, taking the easy way out and fe feeling like there is a chaos. So if you're overwhelmed, I, I just channeled this idea right now as I was saying this. So if you're overwhelmed and don't know where to begin, just begin somewhere. Just take tiny steps every day. You know, uh, I was listening to, uh, a, a, I think it was a Japanese person. Yes, I, I do in fact remember. I think it was a Japanese person and the name of the video was something like seven things that you can learn from a Japanese. I don't think it was exactly worded like that. But he was saying that one of the things habits that like Japanese would do is like they would one of the things is like to clean their toilet first thing in the morning or what I the one I wanted to tell you about is like if you have this room and you want how do how he says oh I remember sorry about that I was just putting my thoughts together so how do you make sure that your room is clean uh, immaculately every day it's taking just one piece that day, every day, and making sure you clean it out and that's it. And then the next day, you make another area even better and even more organized, that little thing. And then the next day, you clean out that little thing in the corner. And then the next day, and so on and so forth, by 
as time goes by, it's going to be clean, it's going to be immaculate, and you're even making it with tiny efforts every day even better. Uh, so forget about the toilet. It was another advice. My apologies. I was like trying to uh, remember which one was matching uh, your reading here. And by the time I was trying to remember the name of the video, I think I lost my thoughts a little bit there. <laughs> so anyways, I am seeing your future self telling you don't be intimidated by the beginning. Do something every day. One thing towards these goals that you have. Maybe the intimidation here is that you have so much that you wish to change. Don't be intimidated. Take steps, tiny steps towards these different directions every day. Be patient and steady with the seven of pentacles and the nine of pentacles. It's going to start becoming part of the cycle, a part of your life. And it's going to give you the appetite, as mentioned, to take in even more things. And like I said, with the wheel of fortune, the different rings are reminding me of the spiral of a small circle, bigger circle, much bigger circle. And you can, before you know it, you can handle so much. And on top of that, have your time of the day to do what you want and enjoy your life even better as opposed to that one thing in your life that used to take most of your time. It's just getting to understand how things work as you go through them calmly is what I'm seeing in your reading. So jump into it is what your future self is telling you. See what you want to. So the first thing, if, you, if I can take you back and remind you, see, set your goals. I'm going to work on these. I'm going to put these for now. I'm not going to feel guilty about them for now. And start taking little steps toward them and integrating it into your life. Because if you, when you stop, you find it intimidating. But when you continue, they start seamlessly integrating into your life as you solve them and allow them to enter into your life. That's what I'm seeing here. And you have two more cards. Let's explore what uh, they are. You have the nine of wands. Oh, a lot of cleaning. We were just talking about cleaning. Maybe some of you actually want to uh, organize and clean something. And you have, oh, and the hair. Some of you, look, I know this is right off the bat, but seeing the height, the haircut. Maybe some of you want to take steps towards how you look. It's something that I felt in this pile for, uh, from the beginning with the height, the blossoming of the flowers, the butterfly. Yeah, so maybe some of you want will be, because this rem reminds me of hair as well. So some of you will be really transforming next year into how you look. So maybe this is a personal development journey or at least one of the wishes that you have personal development journey so maybe personal care take time to take care of yourself is what your future self perhaps is saying here and protect it at all costs with the nine of wands also it's reminding me of that exact advice cleaning day uh, that from the japanese video of the seven healthy Japanese videos that maybe everyone should know about, something like that, uh, that cleaning we were talking about. So maybe some of you have something to clean, like a per place in your uh, house or your office or something, or maybe it's just simply saying, clear out the things in your life that don't have room in your life, like also clear your schedule, clean your schedule, clean the way you do things and with that cleansing, uh, you really find that things are starting to work out for you. There's like this cleansing of right from today, I'm going to clear out this mess of how I do things in my life and I'm going to sit down and organize, clean my life by organizing it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then it's like things are getting into order. So to me, the nine of wands here is specifically saying to organize and clean things out, like stop clearing out the things that you don't want to do in your life anymore. Clear out the shame and the guilt towards the things that you feel bad about. Uh, clear out the things that don't uh, serve you any longer and start seeing clearly what it is that you do want to do in your life. That's the first cleaning process. Start organizing by saying, right, so I'm going to start applying these little steps in my life so that I can incorporate all of these wishes that I want in my life. And most importantly, you do ha you're definitely at this point have a great advice of taking care of you as well. 
uh, my dear pile number two. Just take, just take the steps forward towards that. And um, I said steak. Perhaps some of you want to adjust uh, the way you eat as well. Uh, like uh, maybe that example would resonate with some of you. So my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading of what your future self's big advice on what to prepare to achieve what you wish for next year. Please uh, get right into it and start changing your life because you deserve next year to have what you want to happen. Your future self is saying you're going to be very fortunate. It's going to happen for you. Take tiny little steps every day. This was your reading and I truly hope you've enjoyed it. Please do check out my two books that could help you out in this journey, the Productivity Handbook. It will change your mind forever about how you take a look at productivity. It will help you become a productive person all while you have fun. There's also an audio book there. And the Productivity e-cookbook, which has 210 recipes that are healthy, delicious. And the idea is that they're cooked in a matter of minutes so that you have the rest of the day to do what is important for you. I partnered with a nutritionist to do this homework for you. Get healthy, delicious meals that are cooked in minutes so that you have the rest of the day to do what you want. These are available for you to help you as tools to greatly help you and have things organized for you for the next year. If you're interested in checking them out, you'll find a link to them down in the description box. And my dear pile number two, sending you so much love. Thank you so much for tuning in. Wishing you the best of luck for next year. You're going to do great things and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three, welcome to your reading. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that I have um, lit up Palo Santo. It's an incense stick with Palo Santo and lavender. And I put it with the intention of you cleansing out what you need to let go, any energy that you want to release, clean out maybe your chakras, something that you want to clear out to start a new fresh for the next year. It will be working out for you throughout the whole reading with that intention. Okay, so in today's reading, we're taking a look at your future self's big advice. Thank you. On what to prepare to achieve what you wish for next year. So that could be a wish. It could be several. We'll be finding out together. So these are the decks that we will be using. Your crystal is the beautiful Malachite. Your card is the Jack of Hearts. And you do have the Silver Inch Plant, which we'll read in a moment. The zodiac signs, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, uh, only the signs for this pile are Taurus, Cancer, Leo, and Gemini. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, do note that they are present in your reading because their energies uh, will be matching the energy of the reading itself. And it's a general reading after all. Uh, sometimes they are there to confirm your signs. That's always a nice thing. And sometimes there are within the readings details that um, are belong to somebody else. They may not always belong to you. And that does not negate the fact that it is your reading that you were drawn to. Oh, one more card before we begin. There we go. And let's go. So you have onion. Ah, look at it sprouting. So cool. Okay, that's really nice. You also have TikTok, TikTok. Wow. Maybe are, are you afraid of time running out or something? Perhaps. We'll wait and see. You also have to be fair. Okay. Mm, and look at that owl. Oh, I'm starting to understand something. Wait for it in a moment. Hmm. You have reaching your destination. Your light is shining brightly. Isn't that awesome to have? So, so nice. Okay. And you have... The skunk and magnolia with protection. Okay. 
And look at that, the skunk, as well as the onion, there is like something that would smell bad or something. They have that in common, so we'll put it into consideration. Okay. You have, oh, sunny day. Love that. Mm -hmm. And finally, you have protective nest. Right. Okay, what if I place this card right there? That will work for sure. Now the 25 and the 30 are definitely grabbing my attention. We'll find out maybe, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. 25, 30, 40, there's also a 38, so 25 to 40 or something. Hmm. Anyways, let's shuffle your deck. Oi, thanks. You've got the justice card and find out what your future self's big advice is on what to prepare to achieve your wish or wishes next year. Right, so uh, I'll take oh three and one. There we go. Let's put it to the side and see the rest of your tarot cards. So, my dear pile number three, you have the emperor. Okay. You have the queen of swords. You have the five of wands. Okay. Yeah, we definitely have space here. Right, you have the Knight of Wands, the Six of Cups, the Ace of Swords, and you have the Ace of Pentacles, two Aces. And I did see two major arcana. Maybe your future self is talking about two major dreams or two major goals. Let me place, well, we'll open this in due time. So I'll leave it right there. We'll take a look at your cards because I'm seeing interesting things. So we know it's two energies. Let's keep that here so I remember, all right? But I wanna take us to your main cards here because I did notice something at the very beginning. So the silver inch plant, it, it says happy in a bright spot, away from direct sunlight, tolerant of irregular uh, watering. And what I'm seeing your future self here is talking about a balance of energy with the, with the to be fair card and being wise about it. I'm just gonna put everything together for you and why I talked about these two cards specifically. So what does it mean, in my opinion, that your future self is saying happy in a bright spot away from direct sunlight? To me, this is saying like, it doesn't, this wish doesn't need that much effort from you. It just needs the right amount of effort. It doesn't need you to suffer through to do it. In fact, putting it in the, Direct sunlight might actually harm it. And also tolerant of irregular watering, which to me, your future self is saying, you don't even need to be like that, what's the word, that committed to it um, as you think. It's going to sprout from within. Do you see within the onion, it's already sprouting. It's like it needs... a just a little bit of nurture and care with the protective nest here, and it's gonna work out. So I see your future self kind of saying the idea in this pile. Like what's different here is that this pile doesn't need that much effort. It's balancing the energy. So your future self is telling you, take the time to think. What are the elements that this wish needs? And, and make sure you provide these elements. It's exactly like, for example, how companies have found a great idea 
to have more workforce. Now, no, I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do, or maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. I'm just giving an example to try to translate the energy that I'm seeing. So what do some companies do? What they do is they tell the, the people who have just graduated from the university, hey, we'll give you this three months or maybe even six months or sometimes even a year where you can experience working at a prestigious company like us and get to learn all of these things because these would be skills that will make you valuable, like uh, the, you make your CV valuable in the workforce market. So come to us, we'll give you that opportunity. You'll learn a, a great deal from us, but at the same time, uh, we won't pay, be paying you as much as um, the, the other employees in this um, in this position because the people that come already know how to do this. You're still going to be learning. Yada, 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 yada. You get what I mean here. And I'm not discussing whether this is right. Maybe it's right if it's done in the right way. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is that these companies have learned to do it in a smart way where um, they don't have to use all of their budget to get their goals done. They are like, okay, this department, we can use graduates. It could be good for them and good for us, newly graduates. So maybe like your future self with working smarter, not harder is telling you, maybe you can find someone who would, since we given this example, maybe you find some, you would find someone who is eager to do it with you. And so that you don't have to be present there all the time. Or maybe you can set up a system, a smart system that where you would, take the time to put that system in the beginning, that would uh, take time. But then later on, as the system is there, you don't always have to be a present for it. And so there is this idea of the mind. Do you see that? It's about balance and balancing energy. If you give what is needed, it's going to work. It's not about you necessarily having to be there. And you see the Ace of Swords is about thinking smartly in a smart way, planting the seed in the right way, and it's going to sprout right away. What are the odds, right? Do it in the right way. And the Six of Cups shows it's going to grow on its own. It knows how to grow on its own. Just make sure you give it the basic needs for it. Do you see what I mean? And that involves protection because you do have protection here and protective nest. We should not take this lightly. Uh, because it's a synchronicity at this point. So you just want to make sure it's protected. Whether somebody else does it because there's a common goal or whether a system helps it because you were able to set up a smart system, you just want to be disciplined with making sure that you're on top of things. Uh, it's like checking up. Hey, is it protected? Is it working? Uh, is it uh, like following the time? Uh, the time line, the timeline that I put for it. Is everything going good? Great. Do I need to put in this little effort here? Do I need to make sure uh, I can do this with the minimal, most minimal effort in your wish? Protecting it, you see again, protecting it and it will shall grow on its own. And, and that's so awesome to see in your reading. Here, I do see your future self talking about two wishes for sure. I'm glad I put them up so that I don't forget. One of them requires you to work intelligently, not necessarily put in all the effort. Again, Queen of Swords being intelligent. And there is a factor here of emotion. Like, don't be too emotional about it. What does that mean? Maybe you're like, maybe there are some emotions preventing you uh, to do that. Maybe you're a bit worried or maybe you are afraid of things not working out. Sometimes we want to be too involved and we're afraid if that we're, if we're not there doing it on our own, it's not going to work. Maybe the emotions are, uh, you want to be the one that has done everything. I, I'm not sure, but I think your future self is telling you it's not the time to be emotional uh, or maybe your emotions of feeling overwhelmed uh, is standing in your way. So, in all cases, it's not the time to be overly emotional about it. This is a time to find smart solutions. 
and to just be there protective. Like, is, did it work? Did it follow the timeline? Uh, is it growing in the way I am? Um, I know it should grow. Great. And that's it. You, it doesn't need much effort from you to work. Hmm. The other wish your future self is referring to seems to be something that must be done at a specific time, like time is running out. And being idle, perhaps, about it may not be the right strategy this year for you or the, like the coming year here. So that's why I see 25, 30, 38, 40. Like, I feel like time is running out. Time is running. Time is running. So I see your future self is telling you, you have a specific wish that's so important to you. And time is running out. You This year, you're highly advised by your future self to start taking action right away when it comes to this wish maybe this would help us like identify what this wish is some of you may already know as i say that but maybe you are not sure what is it this wish that is running out of time let's check it out and see let's see oh it's a big wish with the seven of cups Ooh, big wish big wish that maybe you're not working on because part of you thinks it's too challenging to reach. Maybe I won't reach it, but you will in fact reach it. It may seem big now, but you're absolutely able to reach it. 100%. So your future self is telling you that other wish that is so big that you sometimes maybe put it to the side because you think, uh, how is that going to happen? It's actually going to happen for you. And also that requires nurturing. That requires a bit of effort every single day. Loving effort with the Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands also suggests taking a, a action right away. Don't wait. Something that is small will grow into being big into something that you want. So it may be challenging, but things are going to come together to help you achieve this wish is what your future self is telling you. Why am I saying that? Because five of wands is usually competition and people working against each other. Here, I see a team wearing the same colors and they're all like working together. One's holding the rod right there. One's holding the other. One's making it stable so that these two can reach that goal. So to me, this is saying that your future self, having seen of obviously what the future, how things have worked in the future in regards to this dream, I see your future self saying is the universe is supporting you. And your future self has realized that your spiritual team wants you to achieve this. It's something you're meant to achieve. It's not just a personal goal. And you have that big dream that you are hoping for, for a reason. You have it in your heart for a reason. Your whole team is working with you because they want you to achieve this wish. And so <clears throat> when you're thinking, how is that going to happen? Don't worry about it at all. Just take the necessary steps every single day. Uh, plant the seeds and it shall work on its own. You will find the right information. You will find the right resources. You will find the right opportunities. And it's just going to be working out for you. Uh, you are meant to achieve that huge wish. It almost feels like a fairy tale with the um, castles. And, it, you know, funny thing is, funny thing is, the Seven of Cups, I, I told you guys about this a lot of times. One of the things that is known about the Seven of Cups, it's sometimes the energy of, can you see that? Yeah. The energy of building castles in the sky. It's similar to building castles in the sky. And look at that. So, so your future self is telling you, and look, reaching your destination. It might look now like it's daydreaming to wish you can do that or be that or have that. 
in your life one day. But your future self is, is telling you, burst that bubble of um, doubt. Because that dream is supposed to come into your life. You're meant to shine brightly and you're meant to reach your destination. So plant these seeds today and you will find that the whole universe will conspire for you to achieve it because you are meant to achieve it. Things are just going to be working out. You know how when things are supposed to work out, everything just works out? It's exactly that in that second wish. Go for it. Take the time to figure it out. Take the time to take the steps and it's just going to come together. And what you once thought was like a daydream will become your reality next year. And it does look like next year, although you can't see it now because we have the back of this figure. It's going to be very sunny next year. Bright. The sun's coming up twice. It's going to be very bright in these two cards. And do you see? You have similar energies. These two cards. These two cards are similar. The sunny and the sunny. The planting and the planting. The balance and the balance. It, two aces. We keep seeing two grand wishes are coming for you next week. You are meant to achieve them next year. And one of them needs minimal work from you. Just work smarter and not harder. And don't put your emotions in the way. Don't worry about it. Let it flow. And the other wish needs for you to believe in it because it's meant to happen for you next year. And as you work your way through it, you'll find that Things aren't, the challenges aren't working against you. They are working for you. You will get all these opportunities and you will get all these ideas and solutions and paths are going to be opening up for you, helping you reach that goal next year. And one extra detail with the sun here, your light is shining brightly. We can't ignore that. It seems like next year, also with the fire, you're really shining brightly and standing out. And perhaps this is what the emperor here uh, is suggesting. I really feel like you're so in control next year. You're going to be seen. That's like a predictive part of your reading here. You're going to be seen. You're going to have your life together next year with the emperor holding that king um, piece of the chess, sitting there comfortably, gazing into the future. They have plans in their, and dreams, but they already have so much under control. They're happy. They're wearing the red and the orange. You can see uh, next year your sacral chakra as well as your root chakra in balance, uh, vibrating. You can, I can see you grounded next year, full of passion, full of energy, full of power. Uh, and I see you stable and balanced. I see next year your emotions aren't so much in control of you. Your mind is more in control of your life. Um, as in... You're, you're driving your emotions and your emotions aren't driving you. Yeah, I see you being powerful, in control, grounded, passionate, knowing what to do, fierce about your wishes and you're protecting them so well. You, And I think this confidence that is happening to you next year is coming because you have tried and tested. I heard tried and tested in my mind because you've tried and you've tested it. Now you... No, you've got it. And also because you've seen yourself cr uh, create or co-create with the universe, crazy and wild dreams. And now that you've seen it work, you feel like in your hand, you possess the power, just like a king, to do what you want in your life. I see you much more confident uh, next year than you already are, much more powerful next year than you already are, and much more passionate than you already are. Sacral chakra also attractive. Another thing that hit my mind. Much more attractive as well next year than you already are. In fact, next year it seems is the year where things are exploding in such an awesome way for you. It's like your bingo uh, year, 10-10 with the, with the clock showing up on 10-10, you know? It's that year for you where everything's going to blow up in a great, great way. You'll even see yourself next year in a much bigger light. 
And my dear pile number three, this is exactly what I see in your reading. Let me pull, uh, bring out the light. It's even part of your reading. <laughs> There you go. And that instantly tells us that your future self is saying that your next year is going to be very bright. This was your reading, my dear pile number three. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I'm wishing you the best of luck with next year. May you be prosperous, happy, and may your dreams come true. It is happening for you next year. All the best of luck with that. And please don't forget to check out my productivity e-cookbook and also my productivity handbook. These are two books that can totally help you in your dreams and you achieving the things that you want. Speaking of, you know, things working smarter, the productivity handbook teaches you how to become a productive person right away, all while enjoying the journey. It will shift your mindset forever about how to be productive, how to enjoy the process and how to actually proceed with your dreams and doing it easily and the productivity e-cookbook has 210 recipes that are healthy delicious and are cooked in a matter of minutes giving you the rest of the day to do what is important for you i did partner with a nutritionist to be able to bring out this e-cookbook for you there is also a vegan version and if you're interested in checking any of these two books out they are done with every bit of the heart with great intention to make sure that they do help you out in your life significantly. And like I said, if you're interested in checking them out, you'll find a link to them down in the description box. And my dear pile number three, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye!